Angel? Is that you? Listen, child. Ooh, you kind of caught me off guard there, but that's all right. It's good to see you, girl. Where you been? What took you so long to come back? Anywho, I'm happy you're here. Do me a favor. Go on over to styleseat.com backslash touch by tie hair co and book your girl. If you're in the DC DMV area and you need to get your zoot done or that face glam, hit me up. Books are always open and I'm always accepting new clients. Go on and book me on Style Seat. Head over to Instagram at touch by tie hair co and click that book now button or give us a call 202-539-2202 to set up your appointment or consultation. You know I love you. You know I'm happy that you came back. <laughs> it's good to see you. Stay tuned for the video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in a sec. Hey angels and welcome back to Touch by Tie Hair Co. If this is your first time joining me, oh my God, I'm so happy that you finally made it home. Welcome home, my angel. Here, it doesn't matter how you feel, God is still and always worthy to be praised. Amen, we are pushing through. Welcome to 2023, we are here, live and living. Okay, blessed. You clicked on this video because you wanna get into this look, okay? Y'all, so many things went wrong doing this look. Y'all know I keep it a hundred and I show y'all everything, okay? Y'all have seen this beautiful client before. She has returned, okay? And we're going for something different, okay? Something popping. We start off, as always, by cleaning the client's face. So I normally like to clean my client's face with, sometimes I do use makeup wipes. I'll use my cellar water, um, but skin prep, as I always say, skin prep is beyond essential. You cannot just go in applying makeup to the skin. Number one, you need to clean the skin. Even if it's with a makeup wipe, an oxima wipe, my, you need to clean the skin. That's number one. Num this is gonna remove dirt, debris, and oil from the skin. All these things will affect your outcome, okay? Number two, you want to moisturize the skin, always. Whether it's oily, combination no matter what it is what it is you always want to moisturize and then you want to properly prime so y'all y'all know lately these videos have been a key okay the the clients come in honey and they they y'all they a mess my client i love y'all i love my angel so much so um if this is your first time here i always like to start out with brows yes i know the new trend is to do the face first right but that doesn't make sense to me. And I don't do things that don't make sense, okay? I start, I work my, my way from the top to the bottom of the face, starting with brows. Here I'm going in with my Morphe Brow Definer Pencil in the shade Java, okay? Um, I don't know what's going on with Morphe, y'all. They closed down all their retail stores. Uh, where I go to school at, uh, there was a Morphe in there. And the beautiful thing about it was I got a lot of stuff on sale. But I hate that, you know, I can't go into a Morphe and get Morphe products. Because Morphe used to run their own sales separately from Sephora or uh, Ulta Beauty. So that part kind of sucks. But, uh, yeah, no more Morphe stores, guys. So I'm going in. I am filling in the front and the tail end of her brow to extend it. As you get into makeup artistry, if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm just reaching a year in my journey. And let's clap it up for me. Um, I am a certified makeup artist. Let's clap it up for me. You go been working. And I'm still learning, okay? You have women that have been in the game, women and gentlemen, that have been in the game 10, 20, 15 years, y'all. They're goats, okay? Your work is not going to look like theirs. You have to practice get you some models get you some people that are sitting around doing nothing do their makeup you have to practice your hand to get better when i first started doing this a year ago it was horrible all right and 
I still have so much room for improvement. I am self-taught, okay? Then I went and got my certification through beauty school, okay? Through a cosmetology program. I um, am licensed in Texas. I'm currently working on my license in the DMV area. That's why I'm in school. Um, and I received my certificate through makeup school. I received my certification. I'm sorry, my I received my certification through cosmetology school, okay? Working to become licensed in the new location where I am. Um, so yeah, take your time, practice your craft. If it's hair, practice that. Get you some models. And if it's makeup artistry, practice that. And no one ever said you cannot do both, okay? My goal is to always be a one-stop shop for my business. As I have been working in the makeup artistry field, I have grown a really fond love for makeup artistry. I absolutely love doing makeup. Um, and I'm not saying that this is something, the hair is something that I don't want to do. I still want to do hair, but I am thinking about picking up a specialty and only focusing on natural hair, wigs, weaves, and extensions. Color, all of those things, that's a, that is something that I do enjoy doing. However, I don't think that that's my niche and I'm completely okay with that. I love the transformation of doing extensions, giving, providing women with um, the opportunity to see immediate change and gratification with uh, unit customization. I just, I love it. And then adding on a makeup service to that is just everything to me. I enjoy taking care of the natural hair, seeing your hair grow, seeing that change and allowing that client teaching that client how to do that for themselves so i think i'm leaning more towards that in my career in my relocation and i'm happy with that um but moving right along into this look as you can see i am cleaning now cleaning up her brows i am going in with the nika k full coverage concealer in the shade i believe this was zero four um yeah brows are the hardest thing to do i am still not where i want to be with them okay I have grown a lot. If you watch my channel, honey, you watch my old videos, then you know your girl has come a long way. Okay? So keep going and keep growing. To moisturize her face today, I am going in with this Holy Hydration Elf Moisturizer. Y'all, I love, I absolutely love this product. I used to use the Pond's Cold Cream Moisturizer which also is excellent for the skin. But as I'm growing and noticing things, I wanted to get something, a moisturizer that wasn't as heavy, okay? Because I think that that changes with, or affects the longevity of the makeup. Oil breaks makeup down. So, and the uh, as your makeup sets, okay, oil is released into the skin. So you don't wanna use a moisturizer that is too heavy okay that's a beginner tip look for something that's lightweight but that is effective and this elf holy hydration is a excellent moisturizing cream for all skin types okay to prime the skin to prime the client skin i am going in using the calamine lotion so this is why consultations are vital this is a client that has been to me before so i'm familiar with their skin however going through a consultation process with your clients asking them questions like what's your skin type what are you looking to achieve do you have any allergies okay figuring out if they're on medications all these things affect your client longevity your client's longevity and it's also going to affect your outcome in your makeup application so understanding what type of primers to use because a hydrating primer is not going to be good for a client that has oily skin, right? So you have to understand what you can use on the skin. If you have a client that has really oily skin, you want to use a mattifying primer. Something that's going to prime the skin, but also mattify and control that oil, right? That's why you just can't be slapping on stuff that you see on YouTube University on every one. Understanding what you're doing is really, really important. Taking the time to invest in yourself, get the proper education, 
that's vital. I'm thinking about going back to esthetician school. We will see. Okay. That that could be in the star stuff. It could be. Uh, so here you see me going in. I am color correcting the skin. All right. Color correction is a process that makeup artists use to blur and conceal prior to applying the foundation. If you have a client that has a lot of blemishes, dark marks, things that they're trying to cover up, if you have a scar, a tattoo, something that you don't want to show through the makeup as it sets into the skin, you want to color correct. There is a process to properly doing that. I'm not gonna go through it here, okay? You're gonna have to take your time and do the research, but color correction is a thing. I color correct her with the proper color correction color for her skin type and skin tone. I'm allowing that to set into the skin. And now I'm going in and I am applying this uh, base, this eyeshadow base, and prepping her eyelids for her shadow. Okay, for her eyeshadow base, we went in with the P. Louise uh, eyeshadow base in 02. Now, what I later found out, and I've done this before, okay, so shame on me, I should know better. I should have used a white base, okay? When you're using pigmented colors, something that's gonna go against the client's skin, right? A color that you want to pop, a vibrant, you want to use a white eyeshadow base. Y'all, I didn't know what I was gonna do, okay? We were winging it. And I should have used the white eyeshadow base because this blue, would have been extremely way more even and pigmented than it was so that's a mistake on my end okay so letting you guys know when you're using a popping color a pigmented color a bright color you want to use a white um eyeshadow base so that that color just is pops onto the skin just trust me on that to set her shadow um base into place i went in with my rk by kiss transparent setting powder now i'm starting to apply the color okay and you're going to see exactly how blotchy this color is and this is when i realized i messed up you should have used white tie but it's okay we got through it okay it's okay um i'm going in with this morphe times lisa frank 35b palette this palette is beautiful this palette is pigmented, but this palette has a lot of fallout, right? I'm let you know that now. So make sure you apply a fallout patch or maybe some tape under the eye because this cleanup was, uh, it was messy, okay? This palette has a lot of fallout. I don't particularly know why it does, but just trust me on this, it does. So applying an under eye patch is gonna make your life easier, okay? To build on that color, I'm going in with this Mayor palette, Dreamscape palette, in this deep blue. I do not know the shade name. I always tell y'all I'm going to leave it in the description box, and I don't. What you got to do is look at the palette, go to Google, and find out the description name, okay? Because it's in there, I promise. And now, because I realized that this blue, as you can see, on her left eye, well, your left, um, the color just wasn't showing up. So that's why I went in with a deeper blue and started packing this color on uh, using this Real Techniques medium shadow brush um, and picking up this eyeshadow pigment and placing it onto her eyelid. And now you start to see us build on this blue. Had I used a white shadow base, the first blue would have been extremely, it just would have set on the skin nice and even and the white would have picked up this blue. Okay, so that's why you use white when you are using a color that is non-neutral all right um so yeah when and, and again this is why i tell you guys be kind to yourself because there's always a way to fix it so now i'm just building on different blues here i'm going in with this morphe times i believe this was niana is the young lady's name uh, this beautiful palette here i'm using the blue from that and now i'm just trying to build on this blue because i really want her eyes to show i want them to pop i could have wiped it off and started over but i wanted to work with what i had we call them we don't call them mistakes we call them discoveries okay so i discovered 
that I was going to push through this, this thing with y'all. So this is the blue that I used to continue to build. And as you can see, that blue is popping. That blue is popping on her eye. I think I go back in and I top it off with the blue from the Morphe um, Times Lisa Frank palette just to give it a little, that last bit of umph. As you can see, this is the fallout, okay? I am now going in with that blue and I'm blending the top of her eye because you don't want any harsh lines. The line was very harsh. So I just go in with this blending brush, add a little product and blend it out really, really smooth, as smooth as possible. As this video goes on, you're gonna see me call myself trying to put some white into the crease area, into the inner um, tear duct area. Y'all, it didn't work out, okay? That white was given no man, see? Okay, I call myself trying to brighten up that tear duct area and it just, it didn't work the way that I wanted to, okay? So, uh, just disregard. I mean, you could try this. Um, at the time we were kind of pressed for time. Okay. So I didn't really have time to kind of perfect this or even show you guys how to do it or achieve it. So I'm gonna have to attempt this on another look. Okay. But I tried, my attempt was to blend that out and I don't know, it's one eye ended up looking kind of funky. I think it was the left, our left. Our right came out okay, but the left was, I don't know. I didn't see it until the end. And that's okay. <laughs> Moving right along, we're getting into the face application. Y'all already know what it is, okay? You already know. I'm going in with my Mika K Full Coverage Foundation. I believe this was the shade five and seven to create um, a six for her. This was either, or was it a seven and nine? I should have zoomed in. I hope y'all could see what that was. Sometimes you have to cocktail, okay, your foundation color to create that perfect foundation for your client. Cocktailing is a, cert, is, um, a term that we use in makeup artistry, um, and that's mixing, the basically mixing of one or more colors to create um, an outcome that's, that you need. So you're, I had to cocktail uh, two foundations to create her perfect skin tone one was too light the other was too dark equal parts of both gave me exactly what i needed for her i am going in applying this with my flat foundation brush look at that coverage do you see that oh my god oh my god okay just melt into the skin melt why don't you um Anywho, move right along. Y'all get so excited about this foundation. I just think that it's really an amazing product. Um, I will say this, okay? You need to properly prime with this product. If you have an oily client and you're going in and you're using this Nika K foundation, you're going to need a mattifying primer because the finish... Um, what I'm learning is that the finish on a oily client can sometimes be dewy. It's still going to give you full coverage, but it can appear dewy. And, and if you don't want that, setting the face is, is going to be vital for um, an oily client and properly priming the face. Um, I have really fallen in love with mattifying primers. I like a mattified look. That is my style. Uh, so, calamine lotion, milk of magnesia, um, hydrating primers in conjunction with a mattifying primer because I just like that finish. I just like that finish. That's what I like. Um, and that's what my clients like. That's why they choose me. So, figuring out your style as a makeup artist. And matte does not work for everyone. That's not a finish for every client, right? But figuring out, again, your makeup style and what's best for you and the, the clients that you want to attract and creating those looks for people who are looking for that finish is what's gonna make you amazing, okay? Or a part of what's gonna make you amazing. So um, going in, cocktailing that foundation color, we went in, we applied with a flat foundation brush. We blended that into the skin using the Morphe E63 brush and then 
uh, diffusing any harsh lines with our damp beauty blender okay now we're going in to create highlight um, Nika K full coverage concealer in the shade I believe this was three or four I showed you guys I'm not quite sure um, and creating that highlight pattern um, as you can see my pattern has changed a little bit and it does change for every client uh, you cater your hand to the needs of your client, their facial structure, and what it is that they want in their outcome. Changes in shade are okay. Harsh lines are a huge no-no. So blending is what you gotta do. It, it just ain't no question. Blend, blend, blend. Now I'm going in to blend out highlight and contour. I use the same brushes that I use to apply, right? Um, I'm blending this product out into the skin. I'm using the foundation brush that I use to blend. I'm using my small blending brush. I use multiple different brushes to achieve the results that I want to. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Use what you have to get what you need to get, okay? What I will say, um, some of the content is sped up. Some of it's in real time, right? When, we go, when we're going under the client's eye or in any sensitive areas to your client, you don't have to beat them up. This is sped up, so it looks like I am doing this extremely fast. I'm not. The hand is completely soft. The tapping motion to blend this into her skin is very gentle. You don't want your client to become irritated. You don't want to hurt them. The under eye area is extremely sensitive. It causes clients to water. That is going to affect your makeup application in your finish. You don't want water in your makeup. So just being super sensitive, asking your client to move their head up, to look up, to relax. Um, all these things work. Nine times out of ten, your client is going to listen. Um, this this is my client. She loves being on the phone. Girl, you got to put that phone down. Okay? Tell them put them phones down. Okay? So you can beat that face. All right? So just, just your client will work with you. You know, ask them to work with you. This particular day, y'all, she was sleepy. So I ain't have to fight with her too much about that phone toward, until towards the end of the service. <laughs> Now I'm going in to contour her using the Nika K Full Coverage um, Concealer. I believe this was the shade 11 to deepen up bronze and start uh, her bringing color back into her face. Now, some people like to use a cream contour, right? Some people don't, okay? To contour the face, you can use a foundation. You can use a contour stick. You can use a concealer. All right, it's okay. It's the outcome that matters. Some some clients I use a cream contour on. Some I don't. It just depends on the finish that I'm going for. If you use a cream, you have to set it in a powder. Okay, so you if you use a cream contour, you have to set with a powder contour. Speaking of setting, this is what I'm about to do. I'm about to set her face. I'm going to be setting her highlighted area with the LA Girl Pro Face Press Powder in the shade New Beige. Then I'm going to be setting the remaining of her face in, I believe that was Warm Caramel, I think. I just showed y'all, so rewind the video and see. But um, I like to set the face in Press Powder. Some makeup artists like to set the face in loose powder. Either of these work as long as you are setting, okay? For me, my makeup style, I set in a pressed powder. I bake in a loose powder. That's just what works for me, okay? there Again, there is no right or wrong way. So I'm setting her highlighted areas 
in that new beige and I'm going to go in and set the remaining of her face in a skin like um, tone okay this is bringing color back into those areas outside of her highlight this is bronzing up the face assisting me in building on that contour Now to bronze up her face, okay, contour, um, I'm going in with my RK by Kiss Contour Powder Palette in the shade Medium Dark. Now, there, so the difference between contouring and bronzing, it's a shade thing, okay? Bronzing up the face would be you applying a, this, um, a powder, the same shade level as the client's skin okay that would be bronzing meaning you're bringing color back into the skin contouring is when you are going in with a shade two to three times deeper to create a contrast effect to hide to deepen okay that's contour so here she's receiving a contour I'm going in and I am building on the deepest shade in this color to create contrast in her face so that I can create um, definition. Bronzing would have been what I did when I set her face. I went in with a shade like her skin tone and I, I applied that shade to bring that color back into the face. So that's the only term people say bronze and contour. Contour is, de is depth, okay? Contour is gonna be two, one to three shades deeper. It's gonna be a very chiseled look. It's gonna be depth. Um, gentlemen who are in the drag queen industry, right? That deep line that they have at that cheek, that's contour. And it doesn't have to be that drastic, right? But that is contour developing contrast the nose area everyone contours that nose that's like a really big thing now in makeup artistry so they're using something at least two to three shades deeper to 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 slim down the nose right that's contour bronzing is just bringing that color bringing that sun type of tanned look to the skin that could be using something that's the same shade after the highlighting process that could be used sometimes people may go one shade deeper that's a bronze contour is contrast two to three shades just to give you some guys you, you all a little bit of knowledge on the difference so she received a contour here and then i go in and i blend it out to uh define her features people call it baking right that whole process i'm going in with the laura marcier uh loose setting powder in the shade translucent honey a little goes a long way with this product it stains the skin magnificently okay you do not need a lot when i first started using this product i was using way too much you only need a little bit a little goes a long way with this and you will see that um and you'll see how well it stains the skin and it's going to bake uh, those areas that I want to brighten. I go in, I apply that to all the highlighted areas on the skin very lightly. While she is baking, I am going to go in and complete her lips. So this was it with the lips, right? I did not realize that she had some type of lip gloss or something on her lips. So trying to apply my pencil was stupid dumb crazy. When you are doing your client's lips, they need to be free of any oil. And the lips need to be dry so that you're able to apply the product 
and basically the pigment to show. So as you can see, I'm, I'm attempting to do these lips and I'm like, girl, did you put lip gloss on? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, why? So I was like, I wanted my lips popping on video. No, I need your face to be clean and clear. And I didn't even realize that she had did that while I was doing her makeup at some point. But we got through that as well. Y'all already know the lip combo, okay? The Morphe Virgin Matte Lip Gloss. And today on her, I used the um, Morphe Lip Liner in the shade Date Night, okay? Which is a little bit deeper than Trendsetter. Off camera, I went in and I applied her blush using the uh, Juvia's Place um, Blush Duo Palette in the, in the Volume 2. I'm sorry, in the volume one, volume one, <clears throat> excuse me. Now that she's baked, I'm going in. I am diffusing this setting powder on and off of the skin, okay? So this is the Real Technique setting brush. It is amazing for this, okay? Your brillate, your, what this brush allows you to do is just what I said, is diffusing, right? So any product that has not set into the skin, it's lightly diffusing that product off of the skin. I'm going in with my damp beauty blender to press what's left on top of the skin into the skin to alleviate any harsh lines. Then I'm gonna go back in, as you can see, she's bright, okay? It brightened her. This setting powder works, okay? Uh, it brightened her beautifully. Now I want to even out that skin tone. I'm going back with the same pressed powder that I used to bronze her to bring out, um, just to bring her down some, to basically even out that skin tone and to set all of this loose powder into the skin. I'm using this powder brush to do that, bring everything together and it just gives me a beautiful ending. Make sure that when you do this process, you blend out those harsh lines that you create with the powder application. Change in shade is good. Harsh lines is a no-no, okay? Um, now I'm going in. I lost her nose contour, and I'm just going back in, applying more. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes you lose blush. You have to apply more blush. Like, it's okay for you to go back and add to um during your baking process you tend to lose powder and that's okay to add at the end now to bring all of this together blend everything together and give her skin this beautiful glow y'all already know what it is i'm going in with my l'oreal paris bronze it powder lumi bronzer in the shade 03 okay i use 03 to bring continue to bring her face down Okay, with all that brightness because we don't want a flashback. Y'all, she was knocked out. Like, I'm like, girl, open your eyes. So, when your client is comfortable enough to fall asleep, honey, you doing your thing, okay? To set her, I'm going in with the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. I absolutely love that setting spray. It gives the skin what it needs now that the setting spray has set into place i am going in i'm going to highlight her using this palette that i brought from a makeup convention and i'm going to add a beautiful glow to the areas where i just want light to kind of beam off of her face y'all this came out beautifully now let's talk textured skin okay because some of you girls are food makeup does not cover texture filters do okay you can have a client that has textured skin you can do her makeup beautifully and guess what she's still gonna have textured skin makeup doesn't cover texture okay so providing your client with true results meaning non-filtered results Okay, I, I just, I feel how I feel, all right? You don't have to use a makeup, let your work, uh, filter, let your work speak for itself. Okay, off camera, I went and I aligned her eyes with the Morphe eyeliner in the shade Coconut. 
for her lower lash line, I went in and smudged out her lash line in that bright pink. I wanted that eye to pop, okay? And it did what I, I needed it to do. You see that white harsh area on that left eye? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I didn't want that there, but I really didn't see it until now. This is her finished look. It came out fire, no shade, it looked good. Listen, you make mistakes, you don't catch everything. As you can see, one eye is beautifully blended. The other one, not so much, but that's okay. Cause I saw it at the end and I fixed it before she left up out of there, okay? Okay. <laughs> yeah, this was her finished look. It was beautiful. She's never done color before. She absolutely loved and adored this. And so did I. Get into this face. It is beat, but her skin is textured and it's going to continue to be textured with, while being beat. Okay? Do you see that? Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and rocking with me, angels. I love, love, love and appreciate you. Keep going. Don't stop. Keep growing. You are not alone. All right? Until next time time i will see you guys in the next one make sure you hit that subscribe button like the channel like this video touch by tie hair co out bye <laughs> y'all, it's been a key with these videos lately. I ain't lying. Y'all, she tired. She tired, I am tired. 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 But yeah, my girl did her thing. Stop playing.